So now that we know the basics, let's go ahead and go over another few options that might be of interest to you while you're blocking out your main shapes. So what I could do is just start with a poly mesh 3D shape. That way I don't have to go over here and say make poly mesh 3D with an initialized primitive because if I'm just going to be swapping out a shape with this one anyways, let's say I want to go ahead and just start with my project primitive and let's go ahead and do a full reset. So if I want to do a project primitive and I don't really care what the underlying uh, shape is going to be, I'm going to turn blend all the way down to zero. I can just start out with a sphere and not have to worry about the underlying geometry at all. You can see it still inherits that star geometry, but I could just do a new shape, but this is fine. I really don't care what this topology looks like at this point. Now the reason I might start this way as opposed to starting with a poly mesh sphere is if I want to go ahead and say make a shape like this and then say accept. And then I want to go ahead and say make a duplicate of the shape, but then hold down shift and then grab these outer corners right here. You can see very quickly I can dial in that original shape and go ahead and start giving it like panel lines. We can also go through here and play around with the blend settings to see if we need to soften those transitions or maybe even the maximum displacement. And remember opacity, you can pull this in to, to cut in. An alternative to that, if you wanted to do a cut in, is you can change this back to torus. So if you remember, if we go over here, let's go ahead and say new surface up to past zero so we can actually see it. And then we'll go to this primitive type. We'll go to primitive type of four so we have that torus here. Now as I scale this up and we change this to new surface of zero, you're going to see it's going to start cutting in. And then you can go through here and you can change the overall shape of this torus as it's cutting in here. So you can make it more creased on the edges. You can also feel free to make this thinner or thicker. Just using the scale, you can clip one shape, one side of the shape, using the clip dots, or you can hold down shift and do both. Or you can clip from the top and the bottom as well. That might give you some interesting cuts through there. And always remember, you can play around with your maximum displacement, which will give you some interesting curves and fall off. And if it's not enough tessellation, you can increase that tessellation and they'll give you a little bit of a smoother shape. And or you can also do the opacity so I'll go ahead and soften those out. And of course you always have blend. So you can actually blend between the cutout shape here and the original form. As you scale this down, it'll turn into an additive shape because we're projecting this primitive. And as you scale out and it goes past that midpoint, and then it's gonna be cutting in. So we can go ahead and accept. And then we can maybe scale this in and continue cutting. And let's accept that one. And then I'm gonna pull this shape out. And let's go ahead and turn on Z symmetry so it's going on both sides. And let's change this one to a rectangle so we can chop these ends off here. So I'm going to change this back to a new surface here. I'm going to say uh, we have a torus here, so I'm going to change this primitive type. Let's say primitive type 3, and we're not going to taper it at all, so we're just going to have a rectangle shape. And then we'll change our new surface back down to zero, so now I can just clip in and make a flat surface on either end. And you can scale this up if you need to. Let's go ahead and scale it out as well. That way we can clip in as much as we need. We can say accept, new surface at one. Let's hold down shift and make that at 0.5. Now we have a cylinder. I'm gonna scale this in, push it in. And now this is gonna be additive because our new surface is making this a new object. So then if we wanna cut in, again, we'll go back to new surface at zero. And now we can cut in this shape. And like we did before, feel free to use X, Y symmetry or Z symmetry like we have here, radial symmetry if you need to, to go ahead and cut in these complex shapes. And also remember, every single time we make a cut, we're getting a new poly group here. So if I go ahead and say accept, and then we're out of that mode, we can now go in here. We can change this to remesh by Z remesher. And if we turn on our floor, we can see this is symmetrical across the X and Z axis, and I suppose the Y axis as well. So we're going to go ahead and set a target polygon count here. We'll go ahead and say 10,000, and that'll give us nice new geometry. Now, if I want to use these groups, we can go ahead and say, we can delete that deformer. Let's go down here to geometry, Z remesher. I'm going to say keep groups, smooth groups at one is fine. Target, target polygon count is 10K. We'll go ahead and keep that. Adaptive size down eh, a little bit. We'll hit Z remesh. The lower your adaptive size is, the more evenly sized your squares will be. And there we go, we got nice new geometry. It's all nice and evenly spaced. So if you want to, you can actually run a polish by features if you want to, or do another groups by normals, play around with those settings. And at this point, you could even use Z modeler. Let's say I'm gonna hover over an edge. I'm gonna use a spacebar, we'll polygroup, poly loop, and we'll take this one here, 
and we'll say every other one of these, and then we'll hover over a face, we'll say Q mesh polygroup all, we'll push these in, so you can start detailing this out with Z modeler as well, using insert mesh brushes and everything that we've gone over so far. Now, if I scroll back here just a little bit, you can see uh, since we, well, let's scroll all the way back. So if we go all the way back here, you can see since we did start with a star, it did kind of give us a not completely optimized geometry. So it might be worth, instead of starting with this, you do go through the extra steps, switch over to like a sphere 3D, make poly mesh 3D, go ahead and drag that out. And if you start with this one, even if you do uh, say go into project primitive and you overpower it, you're just projecting that sphere and then you're starting with say this type of shape. Let's go ahead and turn blend off. Uh, you'll still probably get a slightly more even topology result when you do eventually go to Ziri Mesh and stuff like that.